OK, so today we are going to show you how you can quickly and easily create a script which allows you to batch install many apps all at the same time in Windows. This is handy if you're setting up lots of computers and you really haven't got the time to sit there and install apps one by one. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say today, we are going to show you this great little app which allows you to generate a script, a batch file or a PowerShell file, which enables you to be able to easily install several apps all at the same time on a new or an existing version of Windows. So this is very, very easy. All you do is you just search for the apps you want here. So I'm just going to search for, say, Adobe. I want Adobe Reader. So I click on Adobe Reader, click Select App just down the bottom there, then go back to Apps. And then I'm going to search for, say, 7-Zip. So find it there. There you go. Click on it. Click on Select App and then back to apps at the top there and then search for our next app, which is Chrome. So again, click on Chrome, click on select app, click on apps and then select our next app or find our next app. Now, as well as searching for these, if we want to have a look to see what apps are available to us, we can also click on either popular apps from the main page down there or we can click on view all and this gives us a list of all of the apps that are available and there are absolutely tons loads of pages here to go through so but i'm going to i know what apps i want you do have to have a minimum of five apps uh, that is the only caveat so let's just search for libra office and there you go libra office so click on libra office click on select app and then all we do is once we've selected all of our apps, like I say, got to be a minimum of five. We just click on generate script just down there in the bottom corner. And here it's basically given us a, a script for a batch file, a dot bat file. We can click on PowerShell there and that will give us a PowerShell script or a Winget import script, which we can just paste into PowerShell. But I'm just going to go for the batch file here. So I'm going to click on batch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click copy to clipboard and then I'm going to open up notepad. So I'm going to click on the start button and then just open notepad. I'll just, just search for notepad by typing it in on the keyboard. Click on notepad and then I'm just going to right click. And then when this menu comes up, left click over paste. Don't worry about the red lines. Click on file, click on save as. And save as type, we want to just change that to all files. And uh, let's just call that batch install and then put a full stop and then type BAT. So that's batch install dot BAT. And I'm going to save that in the downloads folder. So I'm going to click downloads there and click save. OK, if I wanted to do this as a PowerShell file, then let's just close down Notepad and go into PowerShell. And then here I can again click copy to clipboard, open up notepad just by clicking on the start button and then typing on the keyboard notepad and then left click once on notepad and then right click and then left click paste. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on file, click on save as again, change save as type there to all files. And I'm just going to call that power batch install and then put a full stop after it and type PS1 just as it's shown on the screen there and then click save and let's close this down now I should have said there are some advanced options here and the advanced options here allow you to select the installation scope whether just by per user or per machine. Um, request an interactive installation, user input may be needed. Request a silent installation, so you can get it to install silently. Um, override arguments to be passed to the installer. Override the installer hash check and uh, a location for your log files and a location to install to if supported. That's going a bit too far into it for this guide. So I'm just going to ignore that for the time being, but feel free to have a play in there if you know what you're doing. So let's shut this down. 
and I'm just going to go into a yellow folder, go into downloads, and there you go. There's my two installers there. I'm going to double click on one of them. You don't have to click on both of them. In fact, don't click on both of them because otherwise you're going to end up with uh, problems. So I'm going to first, I'm going to click on the batch install. So double click on that. And there we go. It's saying, do you agree to the source agreement terms? Have a look at that website just there. You can move your mouse over it, left click once on it if you want to see the terms. So it says, do you agree to all the source agreement terms? So press Y for yes or N for no, and then press enter or return on your keyboard. And there you go. It's now going through and it's now downloading the apps. And then once it's downloaded them, it's then going to go through and install them. Now, this can really vary the amount of time this takes depending on the speed of your internet connection and of course the speed of your computer as well. So there you go, it says successfully verified installer hash. So it's successfully said it's genuine software and now it will probably ask me just to click yes on here and it might do this for each of the programs. So I'm just gonna move a mouse over yes, left click once and there we go it's now going through and installing. Now, as I say, if you don't want to go through all of this, then you could go back and uh, redo the script just by using the silent install under advanced options. And hopefully most programs shouldn't ask you to, uh, to do anything. They'll just silently install in the background. In some respects, I do prefer things coming up here uh, so that I know that it is actually installing. And there you go, Adobe is now successfully installed. So it's now moving on to 7-Zip. And again, the screen has darkened and it just wants me to click yes. So left click once on yes, and there you go. And it's moving on now to the next installer to Google Chrome. And again, I just left click once on yes, and there we are, that's now installed. And now it's going for Firefox. And again, just need to click yes. And now it's moved on to LibreOffice, but LibreOffice does require some extras to be installed from Microsoft. So it's just doing those. And now it's downloading and installing the LibreOffice program. So again, just click yes. And there we go. There's five programs installed with just a few mouse clicks. And these batch files can now be transferred if you want to a USB stick or put on a network drive. So how did I get to create these? That's what you're probably all wondering by now. So all I need to do is I just need to open up the browser. Once the browser's opened, we just go to the address bar at the top of the screen, not the search the web bar in the middle, but the address bar at the top. Delete out anything that's in there and then just type winstall.app, all in lowercase and no spaces, just as it's shown on the screen there. Winstall.app. Pause this video if you need to make a note of this. Once you've typed that in, press enter or return on your keyboard. And if you type that correctly, then you should see this website here and you can start searching for apps in the box here, or you can scroll down to popular apps, select apps from there, or you can click on view all and go through and find what apps are available to you. I hope you like this video and if you did, consider hitting that thanks button and making a donation to this channel. Or if you can't do that, then have a look in the description down below. We've got some great links down there for you to various things, including my Amazon shop, which contains all the things I love at the moment on Amazon, Fire TV sticks, Fire TV cubes and VPNs. Buying, subscribing and donating really does help help support this channel. It helps me to be able to dedicate more time to spend researching to bring you these great videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money. And if you do see any videos that you think your friends, your family, or your work colleagues might like to see, then please don't forget to share these videos on your social media timelines. You can check me out on X, I'm at CWTEK. You can also check out my website, it's CWTEK.co.uk. Thanks for watching and speak to you again soon.